What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the LCS and the LC and the uh, State Farm Analyst Dokla. Desk, where we're joined by Dokla after CLG's victory Clean over Clean victory. Immortals. <laughs> yeah. Clean as hell, if I do say so myself. Uh, we've had uh, Dokla with us for the past couple of minutes during the commercial break, yeah. and I'm just going to let you all in on kind of the conversation as it broke down here. I mean, you sat down and you asked us, mm -hmm. was that, uh, did we win that or did they throw that? Uh, and I kind of want to turn it around on you. We've talked yeah. about it a little off camera, but I think it's kind of cool to hear from you <laughs> yourself. Like, when you immediately step off stage, is that, like, is that where your head's going? You're trying to evaluate? Uh, yeah, so, I mean... Since we have the engage comp of Gragas here, so I think it's up to us to just find the engages, which we did find the engages, but we just didn't execute them well. So then we were in positions to like really snowball the game, but we just kept blundering until like the very end where we just finally got the fight off. So I think we we threw that game. <laughs> you know, it may not seem like it, but I think we threw that game. Okay. But then you won the game. Yeah. yeah. So it is a wow. That's true. an yeah. that's an impressive <laughs> throw and self catch. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say that was my uh, that was my response is like because the impetus is on you with this composition, and we saw more than a few like misexecuted team fights, like the one around uh, Dragon that'll probably come up in this reel yeah. uh, soon um, is the one I'm thinking of. But I know that's why I would say like okay, if the impetus is on you to make moves, and you guys still were making moves, it's just execution based. Yeah, so I mean, mainly uh, importance of like these type of fights is just making sure who has no flash. So like we, on the last fight that uh, we won the game on, like we knew Zarya had no flash. So then I was really calming, but we need a force on this timing. So that's why we pulled Baron, just to force him to come. So um, yeah, flashes are really important in these fights. And yeah, right here, I mean, I don't think they position perfectly. They shouldn't really be looking to engage on us. Yeah. But, yeah. Boom. Boom. Oh, oh, that's huge. Huge. oh, a nasty knockout. Yeah, like it's just wiped from there, so. This was definitely hyped and gone. So I, I have just a small question, which is a little bit related to prep, because we had the opportunity to talk to uh, Nightshare in a quick, like, little side stage interview following the draft, in which uh, they said that they uh, perfectly predicted that the Yasuo Gragas was going to come out, and they felt like Poppy was a good response to that. When you guys see the draft come through in the way that it is, it, it does rather, and it seems that they have this kind of a, a preparation. How does that change the way you're discussing entering the game? Like, okay, they have this pick that is seemingly well situated to deal with a couple yeah. things that we have. Like, yeah. how are we now going to play around that? Well, Bryce Yasso still can just get the damage off, like mm -hmm. through Poppy. Like, obviously, Poppy's probably one of the best answers uh, into Yasso just because he can't dash around, but you can still get the bulk of your combo off. So, like, it's like a fix, but like at the very end, you know, it's not going to mm -hmm. like prevent from what's going to happen. Uh, like, it's not going to prevent that from happening. So, yeah. like, we knew, like, they're going to play Poppy, and, like, it's fine. Like, we will still win. <laughs> Fair <laughs> that enough. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, for me, because, like, the, the team fights are the ones that we ended up seeing a lot of. Yeah. But you guys started off hot in the early laning phase. Yeah. And then, <laughs> my question is more so, like, how did it feel in the game? Because there were a lot of elements of them just, like, ganging up in you, three-man bot yeah. side. Yeah, I um, felt like uh, we were trying to, everyone was kind of maybe trying to do too much. Like, we had the game in a pretty good spot. Like, we got Rift. Like, obviously, we died bot. We kind of knew they were coming, too. Like, I died top when they three-man me. Um, like, a lot of us probably They three-man like, you bot, too, yeah. Yeah, we were trying to do a little bit too much. But, um, I mean, we are back on stage after, like, uh, the COVID situation with a uh, contract. So, sure. like, maybe it's just getting back into the rhythm of on stage, but. I How's don't he know. feeling? He's, he's much better now, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're back at full strength. Yeah, there we that's go. Good. That's good. I, uh, I, got, go ahead. I want to yeah, ask yeah, about yeah. our pregame segment. So, you haven't started. I was about to do that, no. so I'm glad yeah. you're doing it. <laughs> you can watch it. Yeah. Raz had the idea of doing report cards because last week was supposed to be like a test for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. hey, we're four and one, let's go in, and then we have hard teams, C9 and TL. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had to give a letter grade. Mm -hmm. And like a teacher based you know, on your performance in week three but what would you say about like last week how would you grade cod's performance last week honestly like those games felt like a scrim because we we're just playing from our office so yes. yeah like, i don't think it, like to me it would have been like really intense matchups because we we're playing yeah. this really good team so i would have loved to play on stage yeah but playing from home definitely like detracted from that okay. just like the energy wise and stuff like that but i don't think we played particularly well i think um like they did play better but i don't think like we're too far behind from f to an a scale uh I'd probably give like a C, like a solid C. Like we did. Yeah. Emily, so go. first of all, Emily's the winner, and yeah. also I want to point out that he cited one of the very th COVID unlucky was one of her reasons. <laughs> that that he yeah. just yeah. said the yeah. same yeah. thing. It's like COVID unlucky. For, yeah, for C. She had a couple of other yeah. things as well. Uh, Jack gave you an F. Yeah. Uh, 
it's a technical grade because yeah. you won zero percent yeah. of the yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, by, <laughs> by his standards, you're currently sitting at an A plus. They, you, it's <laughs> <a> <laughs> rock but tomorrow you could plumb it all the way back yeah, yeah. down to an F so. with a loss because no, that's 50, 50, 50 is still in an F. Canada, that's a C minus. Oh, <laughs> okay. We didn't. You're right. We didn't. We there didn't we specify Canadian or American scale oh, on this. That's true. Canadian. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about just holistically where CLG is at. Um, I've got a couple questions at you, so feel free to or to throw at you. Feel free to work through them. Uh, number one, um, Kobe has said in the past, uh, I think it was on a this or that um, that I'll steal from from this week, that um, you are the best pickup between spring and summer for any LCS team. Um, have you thought about or what do you feel about the impact rather that you've individually had so far nearing the halfway point here for CLG, uh, you know, from from the performance that, or I guess the way they finished spring to where you guys are at now? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like, uh, let's see, I don't know how to say this. I just want to play my own game because I think I have a really good idea of how to play the game. Uh, so I just want to be able to show what I can do. And I think I did actually a really good job this game. Like I was split pushing, dying for tier twos, which I, I think is the right play. So just being able to play like I would at home on stage, I think is the biggest difference. So I think I'm doing a pretty good job for that. For you individually, because you did um, sub in for Jenkins due to him getting into a car accident. Everyone wish Jenkins well, by yeah. the way. He's okay. He yeah. played. Yeah, I was going to say, you almost just kind of like yeah, snuck played, that he in. He played and... the subsequent two series, but still wish him well because uh, that's really scary. Um, but you stepped in and you were able to play in Academy. Did you feel a difference in terms of your own perf performance going back down to Academy versus your LCS? Um. No, I think uh, that's like one of the things I've improved on. I don't like like I don't let the external factors affect me. Like I'll just play the game uh, every time, like generally the same way of how I see fit. So I think that's like the biggest thing for me. I don't like the external pressure of like playing against big name players or anything like that uh, mm -hmm. get to me. I just want to play the own, uh, just like champion to champion, not yeah. winning plays. Yeah. Did you feel like you had improved though from, yeah, from being an LCS and yeah, coming yeah, back yeah, down? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, my lane phase is just much better. Just uh, all the small details, definitely. So I was able to win an academy, yet, so thank God. A <laughs> nice. uh, question that I had, because in the next series, you're having Golden Guardians go up against Team Liquid. And right. you, I remember first time you were here, you talked about uh, Blipo a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be a chance for Licorice to be going up against Blipo. I'm interested in, of course, Golden Guardians are going to be playing remotely. So something that you were right. pretty right. upset about, about for yourself. Right. They're doing, yeah. I mean, they, it's a good talking point, right? A number yeah. of teams now have gone through this kind of same situation where, like, almost cyclically mm -hmm. throughout the split, they're going from the arena to home. And every player, it affects them, uh, you know, differently. Uh, but I think Braz's point stands here. It's not only a very difficult matchup, kind of like your week three was, some really tough <laughs> opponents, but now you're also being removed from the environment you yeah. expected to play in at the last moment. Yeah, so my question more so is like, it's gonna be tough for him in a remote environment, I'm sure, but also just how do you feel uh, Licorice chances are today? I mean, the matchup's one thing, but just for the split, I think you've had the opportunity to play against them. Yeah, I mean, I really do think it's just what the champ pool is for like both players. I think Blipper has a wider champ pool, mm -hmm. but I think Licorice, uh, he's only got like a handful of chances he's willing to play. So I think draft is really important. I don't know which side uh, either team went on, but mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, I would give the edge just to TL solely because uh, I think they're just better. But I do think champions and just what the matchup is top really determines a lot of like what each player can do. TL's blue, Golden Guardian's red. Yeah, I mean, just so then I would like to see Licorice have five pick and use something uh, like just a niche counter pick or like not something like Gnar, Sejuani, stuff like that. Um, just go a little bit outside of the norm here and just try to like abuse the lane. Jad's got a smart... What do you think about Gnar? I don't know, he's a sly look. Oh, I was watching back. I was watching LEC and he lost <laughs> every just, single yeah. game. <laughs> but he's <laughs> in every single game. I know. He's so being early picked in LPL too. Yeah. And today it was like GP Shivani and then yeah. hey, so it was like the, like what is going on? I, well, what, I definitely don't want to be part of that trip. Wasn't <laughs> it? But we, we had Huni on earlier today and Huni was saying that Gnar right now because of those durability because of the durability changes made what was his weakest point those early levels is a little bit more survivable, which is why he thinks he's being seen so much more, even if he's not finding success. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely strong because he's, I mean, he's definitely strong. He's like stable blind, always uh, yeah. pretty like yeah. relevant to fight. But I don't think that like, if you just have a counter pick into Nara, then I think he's like not as effective as he can be, but he's just like a safe blind. But I don't like defaulting to that. Like, uh, 
I'm just gonna blind Nar and just hope for the best. I like uh, spicing it up a bit. <laughs> there it is. Even though I did that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you did it, but you don't have to yeah. like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you've had a pretty crazy week, as we mentioned, having to jump back down to Academy yeah. to sub in and then play as well today. So I don't want to take any more of your time. I'll let you go. I know you got another game ahead of you tomorrow. As we head out to the arena for our final game of the day, Santorin weighed in on his rival, Jungler. Check it out. Prize Stalker is interesting because I feel like he's like probably the most efficient jungler in the league where he really prioritizes farming camps. It's kind of like to the point where it's, he's becoming too predictable. It's like, I can kind of like, without even, you know, I can be blindfolded and can probably tell you where he is just based on like the timing of the game. Um, and that's why I don't see him as like a huge threat um, because to be a jungler, it's like, it's good to be efficient, but you also have to be creative and you need to do different things. And sometimes the most inefficient path is the best path because that's the path your team, the, the enemy team won't like think about because they're like, there's no way you do that path. Like it's so bad for the game. And sometimes that's the best path. So just being efficient all the time, like that's, that's not going to win you games. I actually love that play from Santorin. And low key, that was like the most flame I think I've ever heard from this guy. Because he's <laughs> so kind. And he didn't explicitly say it, but he's like, I know where he is blindfolded. <laughs> like, that's that's some, some heat coming from Santorin. Hey, some people play with their monitor off. Or <laughs> at least it can appear that way sometimes. Sometimes Santorin's just got to talk about it. Yeah. But I hey, mean, after words like that, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. I mean, that, that, them some fighting words. If I'm prize talker, I would not be too pleased about that. You know, being called that predictable but exactly. I, I agree it is important to mix up your pathing and that is something that i think st horn deserves so much credit for you know there's there is a reason that you can think of so many times where st horn is playing some random jungler that you do not consider an early game threat and he gets like a level two kill or a level three kill on on trundle or hecarim or whoever because he does he does these random paths that no one is warding at that time yeah. Everyone's like, all right, he's on Ekrim. He's going to six camp clear and go bot, right? Yeah. Well, turns out he's actually doing three camps and coming top where he's level two ganking you on Trundle. Like, no one expects it. It's one of my favorite clips from League of Legends of all time. Is like back in the day, back in the day, like season one, St. Vicious, still a pro, jungling. I'm pretty sure he was just like doing a drunk stream at midnight or something. <laughs> okay. He accidentally levels Q second on a Moo Moo. He's like, all right, screw it, dude. We're going mid. Nobody expects a Moo Moo gank level two. Yeah. Bam, insta first blood. <laughs> and I always remember that because it's not the most efficient thing, no. but it was right. And it's 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 good to mix it in, right? You also don't want to be the guy who does the inefficient path every single time because then guess what? Everyone just plays a little bit defensive and the enemy jungler gets a massive advantage. Right, yeah, he's level farming. four when you're level two. Yeah, exactly. And then you can't play the game. Uh, but to mix it in is really, really smart. It's also why I'm a big fan of teams mixing in level one cheese, you know, five man invades, these types of things, because even if you only do it once in the split, it's in the back of your opponent's head every single game from then on out. And that is something that really does change the way that they have to play the game. People have to play more respectfully. Yeah. But into the picks and bans here, a lot of bot laners being banned out, a couple top laners being banned away from Licorice. And we heard Dokla saying, he felt like Licorice only really has a couple champions that he's willing to go towards top. The Gnar, the Fiora, two of his most played. Sejuani and then his one Kale game. Those are all the champs he's played so far this split where Bupo is just, you know, willing to play pretty much whatever. Uh, Volibear, you know, you're expecting it to go jungle, but that is a, a Bupo special as well. Something he used to play a lot in Europe. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm expecting it to be Santorum piloting this and we're going to get the Lucian Lucian Nami. Nami, okay. And there's no ability to actually fully respond to that bot lane right here. They can do one bot lane pick, but then TL can ban away whatever the pairing is that they are most concerned about. Um, so I'm going to be interested to see what the answer is. I will say though, I feel like Lucian Nami, even though it's, it's thought of as like the most dominant kind of 2v2 bot lane, a lot of times when I'm seeing it lately in pro, it's not actually winning the 2v2s. So it's not actually doing that well. You know, you do have to pilot, I think, very, very well to get the most uh, out of your advantages, try to really get a lot. Yep. And with a Blaze Olive, I think that's actually going to be a Talia mid. It is not going to be the Talia jungle because we already have the Wukong. So I'm expecting this is actually people picking their own champions. It's like solo yeah. queue. Yeah, like, just solo queue. Yeah. Oh, can, can anybody trade me Talia? Sorry, bro. Don't own nope, it. Don't own it. You're going to have to pick a third. <laughs> All right. Uh, I so guess. It's going to be it's going to be Talia there coming out of mid very likely, uh, which will lead me to believe that Golden Guardians is going to have to have bot side as, as kind of their carry wing condition because you have a tank set one top, right? You're going to want to be roaming very likely towards bot side. So yep. it'll be interesting to see what they're going to go for here as far as the carries. Uh, TL banning away some of the hyper carries here with the Aphelios. They could take away something like Jinx as well if they wanted. 
Yep. Um, you know, Zeri's already banned out. The only other thing that Sixty has actually played this split that's not banned is Ezreal. So if they want to just target the things that he's played, they can ban Ezreal here too. But this doesn't really feel like an Ezreal game. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't help your uh, your damage profile talking about playing through bot or whatever. Yeah. Ezreal's typically not that champion. He's great on the weak side. He's very safe. Azir banned out by the Golden Guardians, so removing hmm. two possible mid lane options against that Talia. And and the Swain ban feels like it's kind of tipping your hand a little bit that you want to play more dive, right? They already yeah. have the Wukong as well as the Set 20. Uh, Swain to me is strongest when you are playing anti dive. So, you know, if you were to try to play a really aggressive 2v2 bot lane as well to try to go in uh, with some sort of hard engage from the support, then Swain could be a great answer. What is the final ban here? Do they take away Ezreal? Ezreal. Yeah. So they are just literally banning everything that he's played this split. And I do like it because even though Ezreal is not a hyper carry from the bottom lane, Six he's is unimpressed with the bans. He, he plays so <laughs> safe that it's hard for Lucian and Nami to get those kills yeah. and just dump on him like you were talking about. You want to see this duo do, right? And and you've got and you're making Six A show you, show us some new stuff. Yeah. This is an interesting draft from TL because it's less about banning the meta and more about banning the players, right? They did a double ban on Licorice about you know some of the champions that he's playing a lot, and they're also triple banning Marksman here. So Six A is actually going to bring out the Cog which almost 100% now we're getting Lulu with it. Like pretty much you always get Lulu. I have seen some Renata, some people do like that pairing uh, more as well, but you are expecting it to be Lulu. I think that that hyper carry profile makes sense. You have yeah. your tank top, you have engaged from your jungle as well as your top laner. You have a roaming mid laner, so you can look to play towards bot, really try to uh, get this Kog'Maw ahead. But if things go bad on the bot side for the Kog'Maw, which they could, to be honest, against Lucian Nami, uh, this game is going to get out of control really, really fast, especially with the ability to cross map ulti here with the GP. Pretty good matchup into the Sejuani. Just waiting now for Bjergsen's pick. All right, Bjerg, you're up against Talia in the mid lane. How's he going to play against it? He's got a strong bot lane. He's got a strong top that will also scale pretty well. I mean, this is one of the most standard picks you could possibly yeah. go. Kind of works with anything. And, and I, it looks like that'll be locked in. And I will say, you basically, when you're playing against a roaming mid laner, you have two options. You pick a roamer yourself, or you pick someone that can push, yeah. right? And you either punish the roam by saying, all right, every time you leave, I'm going to have this wave at your tower. You're going to lose plates. Or you just can't leave because you're, you're constantly under your turret and you need to get that XP, right? Yeah. So you know that's kind of that, that first option that Bjergsen is going for. The other option, of course, would be to pick a roaming champion and just match. Uh, Lulu, super expected as soon as we saw the cog. Yeah. So that should be getting locked in here for Olay. This is really, I can't remember the last time I saw a draft where everyone just picked their own champion, though. How yeah, weird is it's that? It's pretty rare. I know this is a, a, a very small, unimportant thing. No, I appreciate all I can, it. That's I, all appreciate I can think it. about right now. Lulu Cog, man. This is the. This is actually uh, Giga Brain because now yeah. there's not going to be a trade bug because they don't yes! have to trade. Yes! The best way to play <laughs> around the client is to not have to use it. Exactly. All right. Now we get this hyper carry, though, and the thing is. There's not any long range on TL, really, right? Gangplank yeah. doesn't have a gap close. Bolivar's gap close is running. The engage you. sucks. Yeah, they don't have a way to get to some sort of six item mega range Kogma that's just an artillery turret. Yeah. If Golden Guardians can get Stixay there, TL will have an, a nigh impossible job of dealing with it. Yeah, it'll be very, very difficult. I mean, what, what TL can try to do is you drop GP ulti on the Kogma's head, slow him down, Volibear flies in there potentially with his ult and the ball strapped to him, Nami wave over top, yeah. you know, Lucian calling over top. You're trying to the whole kitchen sink. do everything to blow this guy up right off the bat. Um, but that being said, if you're trying to really go aggressively, it is hard to dive through a Talia. Talia uh -huh. is very, very dangerous, cutting back, you know, shutting down the dash with your E, but also putting out an incredibly high amount of DPS with the Q spam. Uh, Wukong, you know, there to peel as well. Lulu, of course, there to keep you safe. So it's going to be about creative angles. It's going to be about, you know, if Ansama and Core JJ, one of the best, if not the best laning duos in the league, if they can bully them, then hey, maybe 16 never gets that point. Exactly. I think that's more TL's plan, is less to deal with the six item Kog'Maw and more to win the game before Kog'Maw even gets yeah. it. Win the game when Kog'Maw's at two and a half items, you never have to worry about Juggerball yeah. eating your entire team alive. Going back, talking to uh, Santorin, his words about Pride Stalker. Hey, he's on the perfect type of a champion to outplay, outpath, and get things yeah. going for his team so that they are in that spot where they can just choke Kogma out of the game. Absolutely, and Pride Stalker is not on an early ganking jungler. And he is one of the guys that always does 
really prioritize farm. You know, even back when he was playing uh, the Assassin Junglers, he would really, really um, be very good at getting the farm. And, and I will give him some credit for it, because even in games where they were heavily invading him, I remember a, a Zed game in spring where it was heavily invaded, and he was doing some really intelligent cross yeah, I remember that jungling one. to actually keep up in farm regardless. So uh, I do think, you know, there's more to it than just, like, brain off, kill camps. Um, but... <laughs> That's you know, my favorite way to jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Hey, uh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> uh, I have played with you. Yeah, but, hey, we have Krug control. But here's, here's the thing. You know, sometimes you get 15 minutes of the game, and Kevin Flowers has like 400 CS on Skarner <laughs> and eight items, and you just win. And then you can make that champion actually look good. Yeah. That's my secret strategy. But let's see what the strategy for Golden Guardians is going to look like in this one. Pride Stalker will be starting off at his red buff. Santorin's going to be starting off at his blue. So both these junglers will be top will be pathing top to bot here in this one. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, Pupo also going grass. Not a shocker, but no. um, people are going first strike a lot more on GP these yeah. days. I'm seeing that being mixed in. And um, just kind of, I think, giving some respect over to the fact that Sedwani can put some pressure on in lane, especially when you are playing with Ignite. Uh, and when you are paired with a melee jungler, being able to stack up that passive on the Sedwani uh, does make the 2v2 more threatening. So going for the grasp, we'll see how this uh, little bit of poke trade can do. Can go on starting with the W. Um, so it's not the super aggressive start where they go, you know, Nami E and Lucian E and just kind of like yeah. auto dash in, try to pocket lock shoot immediately. Uh, it is just more about the poke and the sustain here. Uh, sustain generally wins against shielding. You know, shielding kind of wins against all in. That's at least kind of like the rock paper. Bit scissors. of a rock paper. Yeah, exactly. It's oversimplified, yeah, but like yeah. people, people kind of think about it in that way. So um, playing, you know, this kind of pokey style. Oh, that was Lickers. clean from Whippo. As soon as he sidestepped the W2 from Licorice. Oh my god. He just instantly made it He's happen. He's gotta go back to base, man. That's rough. Yeah, Licorice not feeling too great here as a Blaze Olive tries to flash away in the mid lane, but Santorin's already ready for him. Bjergsen still going in, and it's first blood to the Burger King. This is the perfect game after that interview. What yeah. the path did he do? He ganked you without red buff. He just three can from topside with no red buff, right? You know, people are not expecting that. If someone starts top on Volibear, they are thinking, if Volibear is going to gank me, it's going to be after red, and it's going to be from the bottom side. And now, let's take a look one step further. Where is the ward covering him? It's here, because of course <laughs> he's going to gank from red buff. He's going to come this way, but he subverts expectations. He does what is... In a is, good way. Exactly. He does, he does what is, you know, a, a less effective gank or gank that shouldn't work as often, but he pulls it off because a Blaze Olive is not expecting him to come from that angle. We'll see if there can be any sort of a punish here, uh, but does not look like it. So, you know, even with that little bit of time, it was a really efficient gank. He didn't get the topside scuttle yet. Whippo, nice sidestep. Could Whippo's, be in a little bit of trouble. Whippo's doing a really good job of sidestepping the, these W2s from yeah. Sejuani. Those are the part that does the biggest chunk of the damage in the trades. And as long as he's got these sidesteps down, he's winning the trades every single time against Liquid. Absolutely. And we can see this one more time. Just coming from that top side, again, there was a ward on bottom side. You know, this is that key thing. You know, look at the minimap. He thinks he's covered on that bottom side. There's a ward there. He's playing, to, you know, up towards. Uh, where he has the vision, wasn't expecting Bolivar to come oh. from there. And that is really, really close. But was doing such a good job of actually getting the passive autos, then resetting the passive with the barrels, getting additional autos. Yep. And look at how aggressive Hans is going. He actually goes for Lethality first item here. Serrated Dirk right away. So they are trying to pound this lane. He's likely just going to sit on the Serrated Dirk, go towards his Mythic now, and then have that as a Collector second. That is my expectation. I don't think he's going to go for a Lethality Mythic. Okay. Um, but we can see. Oh, Whippo oh, saving here, the W, wants to be able to break the stun with it. Santorin's coming up, but remember there is no flash on the Volley Bear. Team Liquid wanted to turn this one around, but Pride Stalker's got the first kill of the fight. Santorin looking for a little bit more, but he gets CC'd. Oh. He has five seconds left in the queue. Four, three, two, the e. one. It's get not out. ready in time. Can he deliver Woo. the E? No, he cannot, and the Golden Guardians outplay. Man, that is so frustrating for Santorin and TL. At the very least, though, the wave is really good for GP. If Santorin actually holds that wave, that's going to be a full freeze with no TP on Licorice. So, ironically, Licorice actually gets behind off of this. This is one of those things where it feels really bad. and It shows yeah. how important the wave state is because the wave is actually screwed. He didn't get the kill. So, yes, Pride Soccer gets a kill. That is good for their team as 6A could be in some trouble here. 6A getting jumped on by a very aggressive Han Sama who's now got to be careful as he steps back through the Kog'Maw puke. 
Ole trying to provide the last little bit of DPS. They need to the kill out Hans. Hans is slowed. Hans still has Flash, though. Team Liquid getting themselves oh. away, but that trade favors the Guardians. Absolutely, especially because Dixay went for a Vamp Scepter, right? So you, you want to take these long, sustained trades. TL, with this rated Dirk, they were trying to look for 100 to 0. They were just trying to all in there straight up. Yep. Um, but, you know, on top side, it was actually after that play, Licker Shop, like, I don't know, was one or two CS or something. We're going to see Whippo actually extend an advantage here in the farm because of the way that this worked out. So after he picks up all of this, he's going to be up a good, like, two waves, right, yeah. in farm. Plus, all of that experience gets missed there as well. Oh! Making a move on Bjergsen here. Pride Stalker coming in, trying to help out a Blaze Olive as Santorin walks through a ward and shows up. He's after the Golden Guardian's mid laner. He stuns oh. them up, and the lightning crashes down. No flash on a Blaze Olive, so Santorin comes in. They don't even get a summoner off of Bjergsen. Really good read on how much damage would be coming through there. Uh, it's comfortable to survive it without even popping a summoner. And Santorin, you know, right place, right time. Does seem yeah. to have a pretty good read on where uh, Pride Soccer is going to be. So with these uh, extra couple minions going down, the waves are now at parity. There's six minions on either side, and he's up 11 CS. So just about two waves, right? Yeah. And he went from up one or two CS to down two waves, right? And that, that is kind of the struggle of top lane sometimes, is that even if the gank works out, if you don't get the kill and the wave is bad, uh, you can really get punished here. So I expect Lickers to fall way behind off of this, and it's going to be more pressure on Pride Soccer to get things done. Well, Santorin's here, and he's got his ulti ready to go. Stixay and Ole, both with flashes still ready. Stixay with a flash out, but the chain CC means Ole's got no way home. Santorin picking up the kill and maintaining that full KP. Yeah, Santorin has been so active, man. Like, he has been everywhere this game. You know, already... 3 KP very early on here, seven minutes, and he narrowly missed out on two kills on top side. And he has been right place, right time every single time, you know, making those aggressive plays, making things happen here. And I really like how he played that out. You all towards the cog, you force the flash, then you turn around with your Q onto Olay. At the very least, you get both flashes by doing it in that way. Right. And this way, he actually got a flash and a kill. Uh, you can look for a re repeat gank because his flash is now back up and 6A won't have his for five minutes. And honestly, I think even if Ole flashes there, he still flashes Probably within still enhanced auto attack range from the yeah. Volley Bear Q. So I think he dies anyway. There was just no way home. Really well played from Santorin. And that means Team Liquid's at a 1,000 gold advantage as the Golden Guardians looking to move bodies up through the river. But Santorin's looking to move them into the ground. There's the flash from Ole. Yeah, well, going to get it out now. Bjerg's in here. Oh, a little bit Black awkward. Stalker's going in. Santorin has no ulti to be able to get out of this one, but a nice shockwave means the Golden oh, Guardians the are just getting eviscerated. A Blaze Olive is stuck in the pit. The only question is who's getting the money, and the bear is right there. Oh, my God. TL just erased Golden Guardians, knocking them down off the map. If the you ever, shockwave uh, sets it up. The barrel knocks it home. If you ever wanted to see a game of League of Legends end where the Nexus doesn't blow up, just watch that clip again. <laughs> that They just completely buried the Golden Guardians oh, there. Man. They win the Rift Herald afterwards. Just massive from TL. If this is solo queue, there's only one thing being set off that on the Golden Guardian side. It's open? <laughs> Anyone down? Open? That or real noob GG. <laughs> The teams would, and solo queue teams would not be happy at each other for that one. <laughs> Let's see how it goes again. Yeah. As the Golden Guardians, they lose the flash on the support to start it out. I mean, they had the extra members here early. It's it's a 4v2 right now, right? But they, they waited a long time here. Then they go in on Santorin. The GP ulti is really well placed. They all group up here. Shockwave connects on Ooh. three. Then look at this GP barrel from the top side. Whippo auto. The perfect timing there. Nails it onto Pride Soccer. Has it on a Blaze Olive as well. He is down really low. Flashes the bubble, but now there's no way out of the pit. They all go down, and you lose the Herald. This is a monumental lead this early on. Centaurin already has his Mythic. My, My man God. went Swifty Boots. Swifty Boots, the Chem Tank. I really didn't like the flash there from a Blaze Olive. That felt kind of yeah. like an in-the-moment instinct panic You flash. just see the CC coming out, you press Yeah, flash. exactly. You're yeah. trying to get away, but then he finds himself in the pit. Just You can't get out of the pit after that point. So they get the bonus summoner spell for free. A Blaze Olive 0-3-0 and zero here on the Talia. Santorin been doing a great job. Still 100% kill participation on this Volley Bear. We've had a tale of two trash talks today. Soul spoke his and immediately got smacked in the mouth. <laughs> Santorin spoke his and was like, all right, I'm waiting. He is oh. just running the show here. The man is in control. Pride Stalker walking into the jungle, but uh-oh, here comes Santorin. Tries to go for the dunk, forces the flash out. Mission accomplished.
starting to feel a bit mean at this point from Santorin, you know? <laughs> you trash talk him, you're dunking on him in game, it's Jungle Diff, he's typing in chat. <laughs> hey, that's, that is the essence, the Ode de League of Legends, my friend. <laughs> As Golden Guardians have moved their bottom lane up to the top side to respond to Team Liquid doing the same. There are still five plates on both turrets there in the bottom lane, so it's not like anybody lost a turret. TL is just making sure that they're ready to try to pressure different points of the map. Han Sama nearly getting a plate here. Throws out the calling. Blaze all day. Are you gonna look? Losing a lot of health there, but he'll be alright. Yeah, Blaze all moved up towards that red buff, you know, was actually cheating up. You can see him uh, heading back towards down his jungle. But yep. again, this ward right there, that one actually did spot him. Um, so was spotted on the move up. So even though they didn't have vision on the red buff where he was hanging out, Teal were aware that he could be heading up there. And the, the difference in mid here is getting pretty big. I mean, that's a two level advantage right now for Bjergsen. I'm assuming uh, that Talia is well on the way to nine. Yeah, close to nine. Uh -oh. But that still does mean it's more than a full level here in experience there for Bjergsen in mid uh, and up a good 20 CS or so. This get is the dreaded pause, but at least it's not an at-home issue. It looks like it's on Sama. Okay, well, hopefully we I can get back. I have more faith we can solve it here. Hopefully, yeah. We got a bunch of people who are really smart. I remember back when we were doing full remote control LCS broadcast from home. Mm. The very first time I had a tech issue and the engineers tried to explain to me what to fix, I literally couldn't understand half the words. They were like, yeah, just recombobulate the transmogrifier. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what the hell any of that is. You guys are just going to have to remote fix it because I'm amazed that is people know how the computer works in? at all. Yeah, see, exactly. Is your monitor so, on? Oh, I don't know, man. It. This is definitely outside of my skill set. So hopefully they can get that one dialed in here. But man, I am worried for Golden Guardians in this game. We were talking earlier about TL wanting to shut it down. Make sure you win fast. Don't let COG hit six items. Yeah. It's not looking like COG's going to get to that point now, no. but I also feel like they're so far behind anything outside of some miracle Kogma scaling to fit in the base for 40 minutes, they're not winning this. One. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think they really have the damage uh, from anyone else to, to, to kind of get through that front line. Uh, I mean, maybe there's some sort of like miracle situation where Talia like gets like you know, a multi command flip or something like that and combos people, but that's so unrealistic. Right. Um, really, you are just looking you know, to kind of slow down the pace of the game here. I think if you're on the Golden Guardian side, I don't think engages are really going to work from you uh, from this point in the game. No. So, you know, if you can them, find a multi man fight, you know, if you can have like a 3v2 or a 2v1, maybe you take that. Otherwise, you're just trying to slow down the pace of the game. They did get the first dragon, so it's not like you have to worry about soul. You want to yeah. defend things like Baron. Besides that, you give it all up and you farm, right? And yeah. you hope that COG can get to a point where it's like, okay, yeah, the Lucian's, you know, a thousand gold ahead or whatever, but it's it's 10k to 9k. It's not, you know, 3k to 4k type thing. Uh, and you hope that, that the gold difference means less and less over time. And Team Liquid is already hitting those spikes through the gold. Like, you've got Trinity Force on Gangplank. Volibear Kim Tank was done a while ago. Yeah. Bjergsen completing the Ludens on the Orianna right before we ended up jumping into the pause here. The only one of the core four that doesn't have the Mythic, you know, is the 80 carry in Han Sama because he stopped off for the serrated yep. Dirk like you were talking about. Yep. So they're all really far ahead. Over on the other side, Sejuani, what do you got? A Bami Cinder, a Dorian Shield, a and a tier with 132 stacks. That is not a front line that can survive Trinity Force Gangplank, 3-0 and 4 Volley Bear, Multi-Man Ulti, yeah. Dirks and Oriana. Team Liquid's got everything they want. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a mouse issue here. Uh, oh, no. Santorin very friendly in-game chat alerted the other team said mouse issue one sec but okay. unfortunately it's not gonna be one sec. well I was, I was told it's gonna be about two or three more minutes yeah so that's what i was long. given as well so the timing is not accurate here not somebody accurate is not giving the right information over there team liquid so you guys <laughs> are gonna have to coordinate a little bit better on that well, licorice but did thank him every okay cool so thank okay. you for the heads up ty for heads up so much uh, so much good manners there here in the go. all chat See, we were ascribing solo queue negativeness to this before, <laughs> as they, as we were talking about like reporting like, each other, it was opening the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah. Be doing, it. We were doing that. See, that's the difference. I was saying that's what we would be doing to play. each other. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, absolutely. I was like, what kind of an engage was that? This top, OMG. <laughs> But Been that's there. that's why we're I up here. I watched myself play a lot of League of Legends, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have some bad engages. Yo, okay, the crowd's JJ. getting into it. Yeah, Team Liquid leading the way for them. I like this. This is what we miss not having a crowd. Either. I know. You see that sign? Pick me, Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> is Oriana holding that up? <laughs> I don't know. 
Dude, the, <laughs> the Oriana play from Bjergsen in this game has been so sick, too, because the, the three-man ulti in the river, yeah. that was really cool, right? Yeah. But the one that impressed me more, actually, was back there in the mid lane, you know, when they're diving after him, Pride Stalker comes in, they try to force him back into the turret, get that wave shoved up, and then he ults a Blaze Olive in a spot that doesn't look like it's actually very good. It's just like a, a last-minute defense ulti. Okay, don't dive me, yep. bro. But as soon as he ults, Santorin ran out of the fog, and it's like, ah, crap. The timing yep. on that was perfect, and I just love Bjerg being able to set these things up for the team. Absolutely. I mean, the ball positioning is so important on Orianna. You know, when you watch really good players, I always also really like watching uh, when they do the defensive ulti, where it's like they're kiting away, and they place the ball slightly behind the person that's chasing them and ult them backwards as they're running away to create yeah. space. Like, those can be really cool, too. So it is really fun to watch people who have the kind of foresight to not just spam out the queue for damage. Like, they're actually placing it, you know, intelligently to set up the next play with the shockwave yeah that kind of intelligence is the reason why i always trade that champion away in aram i will not play it because i'm just not smart enough to do it i will happily give you oriana any day you of the just week. gotta strap it to a meatball and just, tell them to go in and i want to get hit shockwaves just a meatball just blame them yeah i'll be the meatball give me give me that maokai bro right. give me the <laughs> i'll be the shockwave that's yeah you exactly be the that's that's my skill set right there press w on a guy that's the best way to do it as, let's see, we got a replay here. So this is that play that I was talking about here in mid lane. Pride Stalker comes out. Oh no, don't kill me, dude, I'm Bjergsen. Oh no, oh no, I better like? throw this ulti out. It's not a very good ulti, nobody's here. Never mind, my jungler is. Also, like this is kind of what I was talking about. You notice how he placed the, the ball slightly to the left? towards the side that Ball Bear is coming down from, right? You know, Ball Bear is coming in from up here. He places the ball like right there to pull him up towards him. You know, it is really, really smart. Those little things do make a difference. Maybe in this case, a Blaze all wouldn't have gotten away either way, uh, but it does show the foresight. It shows the intelligence, you know, to try to really uh, not just land the shockwave, but to land it in a way that it's actually going to help your team. Right, and I like the fact that you bring up, hey, it might not have mattered in this situation because, you know, Santorin's already coming in, they've committed yeah. or whatever, but the fact that you're doing it in every situation regardless means that's ingrained as a habit. That yep. is a learned thing that's now just... Multi, your, your brain's got a multi-track mind going. This is one of the tracks you ain't even paying attention yep. to. Lo-fi beats to farm and outplay ganks with. <laughs> like, this is just Bjergsen in his element making sure these things are able to be done. It's just second nature. It's a really good point because I do think, you know, you have to turn, you know, as many things as possible into second nature so that you can really focus on the more complex aspects of the game. Yeah. Uh, the team coordination and communication, that's really what the focus is at Pro play uh, you know pro level uh, for a lot of these players if you can master everything else they don't have to spend their their kind of like brain power thinking about it um, but we'll hopefully be back into the game excuse me very shortly here you know mandate almost done for core jj that's going to be a really big spike uh, with the lucian nami of course still quite a bit of gold in pocket for hans but he is not going to be you know quite done with his myth he has about a thousand gold to spend um and we'll see he's getting there yeah he is definitely getting there so we've got a, uh, so Hans is 103 on Illusion. He's up, what, what is the money? About 800 gold there, up 15 CS versus a Kog'Maw. Like, that feels pretty good. They are not just absolutely stomping Cog Lulu into the dirt. I mean, Stixie has not died yet, even though Ole has died twice. But the problem is, for the Golden Guardians, the rest of the map is kind of burning. Yeah. So it's not like Kog'Maw's got a good support system around it. I mean, mid, mid is down 1,300 gold, 11 minutes, right? So that, yeah. that is definitely a concern. You know, Blaze All of Us already died three times. And honestly, you know, the 2v2, we saw we saw that kind of like attempted pseudo all in or whatever you want to call it from Hans and Core JJ. That went really bad for them. If it wasn't for Santorin coming in, you know, actually turning that around, getting a kill there and forcing the flash, I think from that point, the 2v2 is easily won by 6A and Olay because you're on Vamp Scepter, you're up in health. There's not any ability for a low HP Lucian to actually look for that all in. So you know, I would give most of the credit to Santorin in this game. I think he has really been the difference maker, still 100% KP. He's yeah. been everywhere. This game has been jungle diff. He has just been playing so damn well uh, to really create opportunities for his team from the word go, right? The, yeah. the early gank uh, coming from topside, not going red buff, coming from that top uh, top quadrant that they were not expecting. You know, they were paying respect to the potential of an early gank by warding the bot side of the river, where he would come from if he did red. And I mentioned this a little bit at the end of the TSM versus Cloud9 game, but I love when this type of League of Legends is the kind being played by the teams at the top of the table, and it's working. Mm -hmm. If TL and C9 are saying, no, you are not allowed to play that 15-minute scaling BS, like no PvP, first blood at 20 minutes then hey, now everybody else has to be able to respond to this, right? You cannot yeah. just play slow if your opponents are constantly going to force everything and take everything on the map. If they're the ones always making plays, you've got to be ready, and it makes it so much more fun to watch. Oh, I see Reddy's in the chat. Let's go! Might be having some League of Legends. I am so ready.
I am so ready. We're should just about. Should I tell them campfires is also ready? I, can they can they read from us? Is that oh, how they, they can read? Does that I does can that, do that work? Right are now. you allowed to actually? I probably shouldn't do it. You should probably I, not do it. That might be a distraction. We yeah, might get might be, we might yeah. the first ever caster fine. <laughs> we don't actually get fine when we say bad words. By the way, that's a myth. Anyway, we've got a four and a half thousand gold lead for Team Liquid. Seven to one. Eleven and a half minutes into the game, and the Golden Guardians have got to stabilize somehow. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. Going to be looking to slow this down as much as possible. If they base here, though, top tower is probably just gone because you have Harold right here. So I think yes. they walk up. I think full tower is about to die. Uh, and that means it's going to be even more of an injection of gold here. They're already up 5K pre-12 minutes. That is rough stuff. Six, they're going to get back up here to defend the tier two. But first tower going down. Nicely done. It was already about 800 gold between those two marksmen. Now it's about 1,400. Uh, so that is a really big lead. And with all that gold in pocket here, he's got 2K in pocket. So he probably actually does have Mythic now, right when he goes. Oh! So yeah, it, it's still connected. Uh, that sucks. He hit the eyeball when Shelly was in the charge animation, but she still managed to slam her body into the thing. <laughs> That's commitment. Yeah, Shelly, till death do us part, yeah, Team Liquid. Yeah. Big TL fan right there. <laughs> uh, Hans and Cordage both finishing their mythics. So we have we have the Gale Forest, we have uh, the Imperial Mandate. So it's five mythics to zero. And uh, I'll let you that's do the tough. math on if that's good or not. Even Skarner players can do that one. We call that one a dub here for the side of TL. Uh -oh. Ole getting caught out by Bjergsen, who can sidestep away from the Glitter Lance. Ole at 300 HP. Bjergsen still seeing if maybe there's a play to be found here. Here comes the Swifty Bear. Ole walking back into the jungle. Okay, Santorin's not going to see him. He's just going to take away the red buff instead. Ole sees that it's not there, but it's Pride Stalker walking up, ready to challenge for this. Santorin's got Core right behind him. He's got the smite. He'll take the red. Stixay's now got to be careful. There goes Volley. There goes Stixay. Oh, they're just running right past him. They don't even care. <laughs> Santorin looks for more. There's not any more to be found. Oh, man. But Team Liquid just don't stop. The disrespect. Santorin cares <laughs> so little about Stixay's damage. Just walks past him. Looking for the next target there. Meanwhile, here in bottom lane, the 1v1 between Bwipo and Licorice continues to favor Bwipo as he sidesteps the Ws with ease, maintains control over the wave. Golden Guardians are drowning right now. Yeah, that's that, that, that side to side jukes. Uh, so many people, you know, really kind of default to, to juking backwards, but the side to side is so important in a lot of top lane matchups, actually. Yeah. Uh, Sejuani's obvious one. Uh, Gwen is another really obvious one. You know, the side to side is much more With the efficient. needles. Exactly. The needles, but also the Q, the true damage on the oh, final yeah, Q. Oh, yeah, the middle. Exactly. You want to get out of the middle for that. Um, champions like Mordekaiser, which isn't as popular since the nurse, but Mordekaiser, you know, dodging side to side is much more effective to dodge the Q, the E. So it is a skill that you really have to practice in a lot of those matchups. And... Uh, Bupo looking really comfortable. And I've got to say, it's actually so frustrating when you just can't hit any of those spells, when someone oh, is yeah. really good at the side-to-side -side dodging. It gets in your head, man. They got you downloaded. Well, the Golden Guardians are going to have to find something here eventually because Team Liquid just completely running over the game, and yep. they are not slowing down. The next Drake will go over to them. Golden Guardians acquired that first one, like really you said, during the break. Too. Whippo just walking away from Pride Stalker here. I don't think he's too worried. Takes a chunk out of him there with a the barrel. Whippo still just trying to stay alive and fight this. Bjergsen helping him out over the wall here. As the Golden Guardians can't find any sort of a play, Core JJ working his way up towards the top side as well as Bjergsen takes the blue buff. One to one here on Drake's as Santorin took that one. And now with TL bringing more bodies up into the top side river, it's time for Golden Guardians to head home. Yeah, good little attempt from Pride Stalker, but at the end of the day, it is his ult and flash down. They're going to oh. go for a dive. Nice stasis there. A Blaze Olive still staying alive for now. Han Sama tank in the turret, so he's got to get back. A Blaze Olive. Nice job. Oh, great ulti. Nice stun onto Santor and nice shutdown to the Golden Guardians mid lane. That is really big. That was actually so well played with the stopwatch there from a Blaze Olive. Needed to get that out before the volley stunned him, was he able to do so. And as a result, you know, the slowdown, the damage landing there, then Licorice coming in, there was no ulti available for the volley bear. It came up after he died, so he couldn't yeah. actually ulti to immune the Sejuani ultimate and didn't have his flash. So uh, that goes down. That means they get the kill, they get the shutdown, and they are going to get the Herald. Uh, so we'll see if they can grab a tower off of this. 
it is a big injection of gold over there for a blaze all so he'll have his mythic money but still i mean it's it's slim pickings on what's going well for them because they're down 7k well at least in being able to grab that herald even if you get no value out of using the herald yourself you can't summon it in range to get a charge or anything you stop tl from getting it exactly which is You're spiting them uh, yeah well I'm, i was at least going for the it stops the gold bleed <laughs> from getting more egregious You're making sure they don't have fun which i was is the most important part of league of legends we're all going down together <laughs> it's not actually about having oh, fun no. yourself man i'm just... making sure your opponents really have even less fun it's gonna make you guys miserable <laughs> Well, I think TL's still having a pretty good time. <laughs> 8,000 gold lead at 16 About minutes. Is, uh, it, that's attempt. normally the kind of League of Legends that I like to play. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Golden Guardians, let's see if you can do it again or, you know, seven, eight more times. Try to bring this one back. You know, Liquid. At a certain gold deficit, Shelly should really just start fighting for your team. You know, forget the charge. Yes, turn her into a pet. You, you can just, just summon like, her and then you BF can move store. her around. She has abilities. Yeah. You can charge her into stuff. You I will buy that. items for Shelly if you're 10k down. And, but if you're 10k down, you don't have any money for anything. How are you going to pay for Shelly? All items on Shelly, you know? Just all eggs in their basket. Yeah, here's Shelly. Here's a brown boot and a long sword. Good luck. <laughs> Get out there, I don't partner. think that's going to do it. On Sama getting back over the Talia wall. Blaze Olive tried to make an entrance uh -oh. and stop Team Liquid, but uh -oh. they couldn't quite get it. TL back and away now. The Gangplank ulti used just to make sure the Golden Guardians didn't look for anything else there. Yep. Gonna be able to just walk out of that one. Good little bit of chunk. I mean, that, that's one of the most effective things I think about the Lucian Culling. When you're playing with Nami, the Electro proc, the E-Procs, you can kind of go for this this long range. Like, I almost feel bad calling it poke because you can 100 to zero someone, right? So it is pretty threatening, but Bubu in some trouble up here on the top side. A Blaze Olive and Pride Stalker going after the TL Burn. top laner. He's still burning. Oh. Four heals him at the last oh. second <laughs> and keeps him alive. Nicely done there as Santorin and Han Sama take down Pride Stalker. Whippo is still running. He eats the oranges. He survives the Cog ulti. Wait, Another shot hits one him. One more. One more. No. <laughs> not going to happen. And Bjergsen oh, no. looks for more. A Blaze Olive wants to run. But the Lightning finds the slow and Bjergsen finds the kill. Man, that's such a tilter. That is a gold diff right there. Live at 20 uh -oh. HP. Now 6A. Time to flash, bud. Okay. The Butterfly lives another day. Good. That's my favorite Kog'Maw skin. Is it? Yeah, because he tries to fly. What about the dog one? Everyone seems to love that, but I actually hate that skin. I No, he doesn't try to fly, dude. Watch Kog'Maw try to fly and just jump his little butt up in the air. Oh, well, Licorice is uh, in the arms of the angels, buddy. Good night. <laughs> fly away from here. It's kind of just saying an allegory for the game. You know? Golden Guardian's trying to fly, <laughs> deep but now, not, yeah. not quite <laughs> able to. <laughs> Isaac's writing a book report on this one. <laughs> In this essay, I will explain how Kogma is symbolic for the Golden Guardian. Did you have Cole's notes when you were a kid? You know, like just like the summary where you could like buy a book and just told you the book in like 10 pages? Oh, we had Spark Notes online. Oh, same that's, thing then. Yeah, that's what yeah, I did for yeah, every book yeah. report. I was like, this is 300 pages. I'm not reading it. I'll, <laughs> I'll read the summary though. <laughs> I will read the Spark Notes two hours before my assignment is due though. <laughs> right, it works. Okay, would you rather get like a 95 reading 300 pages or would you rather get a 90 reading one page? This uh, is some terrible life advice. That's so. a better deal. Uh, True. I am not a licensed tutor, teacher, or anything related to it. If your parents <laughs> catch you listening to this, this is, not, this is not real academic <laughs> advice. You probably shouldn't listen to me. Anyway, the Golden Guardians have summoned the Herald. They're looking to take down this Tier 1 turret. Objective bounties are up. Give them a little bit of money. Give them something. They're down 11,000, damn it. That's All a right. dub. They'll it's going to be that. traded, though. It's going to be traded back for the Tier 2 in mid, so we're still not back to four digits in the gold lead. We are not. Uh, but... We'll see if they can find any sort of a pick. They're looking now for Bjergsen. Okay, Bjergsen getting caught out by Pride Stalker. Uh, okay, not not enough. Not enough. The Blaze Olive also running theme, away. Man. Oh no, Pride Stalker. Uh -oh. Okay, he jumps back in. Uh, it's not enough. It's not enough. It was a good try. Yep. Golden Guardian staying pretty proactive. You know, are looking for plays, but they're just so far down. It's hard to make any of these plays work. And TL now gonna take Baron on spawn here. 20 minutes in. The Kogma will take a dragon. Okay. So that's something. Yeah, they got they got that. So they'll be able to secure that, but in the face of a Varen take from TL, honestly, what I want to see here, if we're looking for, you know, how can TL Im impress with this game, I want to see the game end oh, on this Varen this. push. Yeah. It needs to end on this push. You are 12,000 gold up at 20 minutes. Yeah. Your opponents have a cog ball that is on one and a half items. You should be able to just send this straight down mid with a gut punch. I mean, I, I agree with Volibear as well. You know, definitely the ability to turn off those towers and look for the dive. That being said, 
Um, you know, maybe the only way that Golden Guardians could come back is a failed dive. So diving into the cog plus Lulu could be a little risky. Um, but I think with no flash on Stix A, uh, they can definitely do it. Push it up. Look to try to make these plays happen. If they get the kills, they could try to close this one out. Pride Stalker. Gets himself over the wall. Nicely done. That change to Wukong, pretty big deal for both his survivability oh, yeah. and playmaking possibilities. Yeah, I mean, that's really what pushed him back in the jungle, right? We yeah. have not been seeing Wukong for so long. Last time I remember Wukong jungle was back when, like, Brutalizer was still an item, right? When people oh, would, would yeah. go for that. Um, so it, it's been kind of cool to see Wukong back in the meta a little bit. I think it's a pretty fun champion. But TL now pushing into waves here. There's no TP flanking wards. They're gonna look for a pick. Okay, they're going in. Santorin and Bjergsen getting jumped on 5v2. Bjergsen's now the target, but he flashes away. Nice sidestep and the seismic shove and the shock wave to turn it around. Bjergsen has already found one. Has Pride Stalker and Licorice still look to finish him off. Flash away from the Monkey King. The shutdown goes over to Licorice, but at the cost of three Golden Guardians players. Whippo looking at chase after Stix A and Ole. Uh -oh. Another barrel's been put down. They'll interrupt it, but it will not matter. Four for one for TL. I think you're going to get your wish here. TL pushing into the base, pushing through mid, pushing through top. At the very least, they're going to get double inhibitor here. Yep. The respawns are so short this early in the game that a Blaze Olive will be up, but I think they can get Silver continue lines. looking to close this one. <laughs> Don't Definitely worry, guys. Apple, don't worry, we're losing so bad that the respawns are really short. We're right back up in 20 seconds. They can't end. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the reality for the Golden Guardians. Our Nexus is safe. That's the bright point of the game for them now, down 14,000, 16 to 3. TL has just been running this from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. They do get a big shutdown there on Bjergsen. I think it was a 1K, but even with that 13.5K ahead, yeah, uh, it's, you know, not not enough. We'll say that much. TL almost has many as many thousands in gold lead as they have kills in the game. <laughs> That's true. They are very very far ahead. Like the attempt though. Again, Golden Guardian yeah. staying pretty proactive here. Um, but Santorin is just so tanky, and Bjergsen really nice moves here, sidestepping the oh. seismic shove there, shockwaving them back away from himself as everyone comes in from the rest of the team here. They do get back in onto Bjergsen here and are able to just barely finish him off. As the E proc there, the Q auto comes through. They get the shutdown onto him, but Stix A and Olay, no way out. They do get the flink and they got a kill here. Oh, Santorin. Ooh, All right, that, okay. was a little, that was a little bit of an in. That was, <laughs> that was not what he was hoping for. Golden Guardian says the damage to get that pick, so at least they got that. But the problem is, yeah. okay, so 12.7 thousand gold lead. Observers, could we switch to the gold view real quick? Okay, Santorin's got 8.7 thousand, so with the bear off of the map, TL still has a 4,000 gold lead. Yeah, that's right. And we know how much they love that number. Yeah. So they're still <laughs> in a spot where they can just win. That's an old meme. Right? It checks out. It does check out. It does. Yeah, it does check out. <laughs> Back in the curse days, forever fourth. And then they won four championships in a row. Right. It all continues. How many splits has it been since they won a championship? Is it four? It's been a while. I think it... Wait, when was the last one? It's been a long time. I don't know. I'm not really good at the math. Anyway, we've got Golden Guardians still trying to hold on. Still just clinging to life. Hey, Kogma has as many items as Hansan completed. I, you know what? I, I feel like you're being cheeky right now. You're, <laughs> <laughs> this is no. The best part was back in the green room. I told Isaac that we needed Sassy Azale on the cast today, <laughs> and now here I am receiving there Sassy Azale. Asking you shall receive as, as Team Liquid is. Just... <laughs> All right, TL, walk it in, boys. Walk it in. Let's uh, let's wrap this one up. Golden Guardians still trying to defend. Pride Stalker leaves the clone behind. The actual Wukong surviving with plenty of HP there. As a Blaze Olive's ulti is ready to go. But Team Liquid aren't too concerned about it. They're just going to continue putting damage into the Nexus turrets. That first one's about to fall. Golden Guardians not going to commit for that. Whippo's still down here in the bottom lane. Licorice was holding him off, but now Licorice rejoining the rest of the Golden Guardians. They're going to have to make their move soon. They're about to lose the second Nexus turret here. Bjergsen stepping back. Getting away from the Kog'Maw slope. Whippo still putting the work into the tier 3 turret here in the bottom lane. Santorin surviving, using the cleanse. They're going right back in. It was the Mikhail's Crucible, I believe, from Core JJ that was able to get rid of that CC. Whippo ulti comes down right on top of those Nexus turrets, with that one Nexus turret remaining, I should say. TL playing this one slowly and methodically, taking down all inhibitors. Golden Guardians falling back to the fountain now. You can see a recall coming out from Whippo. He does have his teleport to rejoin the fight. 
Nexus turrets are already gone. Golden Guardians they gotta look. staring down the barrel of a direct 5v5 with no turrets to fight under. This is their last stand. Hansama goes in, baits them with a nice stopwatch. Stixe trying to stay alive. Santorin here on the front line. Whippo tries to get away, but he's gonna burn down. But it's okay. a one for one trade so far. Golden Guardians are still alive, but the Nexus is under pressure. Oh, it's gonna go Hansama down too. shut down. A blaze olive grab it down. Oh. Bjergsen has no mana. Santorin tries to flee as a nice oh. Seismic <laughs> Shop finds Core JJ. Team Liquid are about to lose more. Ole gets the Sapporo combat as Licorice runs down the enemy mid laner and TL lose four. That's not how they like that okay. number. Okay. All right, Golden Guardian is hanging on. Cog Lulu coming in clutch there. They're not able to find the engage. Virkson out of mana. Not able to, to make it happen is as, as a pretty good initial play, but they did get the stopwatch, they did get the flash off Stix A. That's really the only reason he was able to survive. Yep. Put out a ton of damage. He just bought double zeal. That is not gonna be intentional. <laughs> is so wait, he sold it? Does he did he not have money then to actually complete? I guess he must be just short. All right, well, let's watch this one more time. They look for the initial play here on to Stix A. They decide to make the call. Hansama dashes in. It's double stopwatch from both the marks, and then the follow-up play tries to come through here. Six A flashes back out of range. They wall off Whippo. Whippo gets knocked down. Santorin's getting shredded there by Six A. Can't quite finish him off, but able to step forward here. And Bjergsen now out of mana. You know, just trying to stay around, finish the nexus. It seemed like split calls from TL um, because they were not able to finish it. But TL gonna grab another Baron. I mean, Bjergsen had about 10% mana and no ulti to start yeah. that off with. So I feel like TL was just thinking, yeah, let's go in. We're so far ahead, just brute force it. It doesn't matter. Unfortunately, they weren't far enough ahead to make up for that. So the Golden Guardians held on. But it is now another Baron in the pocket of TL. It is now another situation where the Golden Guardians don't have any turrets to hide behind. They have nothing left to defend with. TL is marching towards the base. They've got resources this time. They've got Baron. They've got mana on Bjergsen. Golden Guardians has to pull off a miracle. Yep, 6 8 does have his third item, so that's something he got, but no flash makes it so hard for him to play. I mean, yeah. if you just if you just only try to shockwave him, it's gonna be very difficult, but they're going in! Golden Guardians, Pride Stalker's able to find the knock up on three. Sticks a under pressure, but still looking to kite and fight. Santorin survives with a stopwatch. Pride Stalker getting himself away. Santorin's oh. about to die. Might just survive in a blaze olive, getting the kill back on the Whippo. Licker is turning around. Santorin's taken out. Team again. Liquid did it! Do it! Golden Guardians holds the line. Oh my god! If they could get down there and actually take the dragon as well, they would be on sole point here. You're starting to sweat a little bit if you're a TL fan. Boris, you were saying they need to close it out at 20 minutes to really check those boxes. We're closing in on 30 now. Yeah. And that was the flash from Santorin, but there was no follow-up. It looked like Santorin almost soloed out Stixe. I want to watch Bjergsen. What was happening to Bjergsen at this time? So Santorin flashes forward. Bjergsen is just not really there to be able to follow it up. He is in the Zonias. Look at this damage on a 6A. Even if the GP ulti was placed better, I think 6A just dies. Santorin basically just soloed him. And yeah, the game is over, but they don't have the coordination to finish him off. A great job by Santorin juking out on a lot of those plays, but Sejuani was out there ahead of them. They did get Dragon, so they got a bounty. They're on soul point. And oh my God, man. A Blaze Olive's damage, nearly 5,000 in that fight. This is a guy who started the game off 0, 3, and 0. Santorin had him locked in, just killing him over and over and over again. This but is he, getting scary. He's kept his school and he's scaled up. The inhibitors, two of them are alive for the Golden Guardians, the last one respawning in one minute. And, and Blaze Olive almost has a death cap, right? And I think, you know, 6 8 gets to a fourth item here. Like, the dive is bad from TL. They do not have a strong dive comp. We talked about this earlier. Their, their plan was to blow Golden Guardians out of the game, right? Yep. And now it's a level 16 Kog'Maw here, level 17 on Blaze Olive. You know, if they can get to Death Cap, if they can get to a fourth item here for Stixe, it is really tough, legitimately really tough to actually fight through the Talia and get to that Kogma. He's gonna have Flash again here soon. We'll see if TL wants to try to go before he gets it. If you can Shockwave him, you could end the game, but it's risky, they're going. Okay, they throw out the Talia wall, they don't get a Not whole quite. lot. I think Golden Guardian still has one more really tough fight ahead of them. If yeah. they can weather this storm one more time, I might start to be a little bit more of a believer. Aaron's I still think it's I incredibly mean. favorable for TL. Mid lane inhibitor is the target. That one's going to go down. TL claim it. They back away. 
Dixay just clearing out these waves as much as he can. Licorice moving top, looking for Whippo. Remember, the Nexus is still open. Pride Stalker dropping the clone to try to block some of the calling. Licorice now using the stasis, keeping himself alive. Golden Guardians know they got to be able to fight here. Licorice about to die. Dixay trying to kite around. Licorice is down. Oh, oh my god! Really grabbing one, but it ain't gonna happen. They take out the enemy AD carry. Four versus three, Stixay's done. Team Liquid took out the cog, but now a Blaze Olive is the cannon the Golden Guardians have to rely on. Pride Stalker jumps in, Pride Stalker jumps out. Santorin still looking for any sort of an angle. A Blaze Olive still defending. Bjergsen, no ulti still about 75% of the way through that cooldown. Pride Stalker running away, Whippo with they a flat go, go. Nexus is low. It was a valiant effort, but it will not matter. And Team Liquid takes the win. What a close game, man, and at the end, it was, it was actually starting to get a little bit dicey there for TL. They were dominating for the first 20, 25 minutes. Those last couple Nexus pushes yeah. made you start to believe a little bit there for Golden Guardians. Of course, they were still so far on the back foot, and at the end of the day, it is still a 10,000 gold win here for TL in 31 minutes, so uh, pretty dominant, but not the way they would have wanted to close it out. And 6 they did get his flashback at the very end, I think right after he died. So like, if they hang on for that fight, the Baron buff had expired. They were actually the ones on Soul Point. Death Gap was coming through. There was opportunities here for Golden Guardians. I mean, we got to see what Golden Guardians draft wanted to accomplish yeah. there at the end. We got to see what that could have looked like. But Team Liquid did their job right. We were talking about Golden Guardians wanting to scale. Team Liquid just needs to blast them early game, and they did. Santorin, Santorin, Santorin. Santorin was amazing. So much kill participation, so much playmaking. This was the guy who made it so TL wins. Because if he doesn't do all that early, yeah. if they don't have a 10,000 gold lead by the time that Kog'Maw starts to come online, all of a sudden, that's a different game. Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that game, the early game was catastrophic for Golden Guardians. Oh, yeah. Volibear was everywhere, killing every lane, you know, always in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, in the later stages of the game, I think it was like more about Bjergsen, how he was playing, more yeah. about, you know, the carries, of course. That's kind of just how the, how the jungle goes, especially of when course. you're playing a tank jungler. Um, but early game, Santorum was incredible. To me, he's the player of the game because he put them in the, posi in the position to actually win in the later stages. But definitely credit to, to Golden Guardians. I thought that game was going to be them rolling over and getting just absolutely stomped after what was a monumental gold lead. It was what, like 14, 15,000? Yeah, I think like around 20 peak. minutes. It was, it was ridiculous. It was absurd. And they actually were able to hold on and have some pretty impressive Nexus defenses. And I do think if they could have held on for another minute or two, you never know what could happen. That's what I was looking at. That fight right there, I looked at yeah. as probably the last fight where I would say, yeah, I'm still firmly giving this one to Team Liquid. Like Golden Guardians has to pull off something crazy. But if Golden Guardian survives that, like you said, especially with the timing of the Stix A flash, the fact that they were still scaling up, looking towards that yeah. fourth item on a Blaze Olive, things get a lot scarier. But Team Liquid finally found their angle. The barrel found Stix A. He gets exploded. It didn't work out for him. Licorice died at the start of the fight, so they lost their tank line. Yeah. It just wasn't enough. They were too far behind. Good job to TL. But Golden Guardian's at least showing us what they were drafting for. The plan was cohesive. It's just staring down the barrel of a Santorin Volley Bear is a scary place to be. And now we're joining the Tigress and the bear himself for our Verizon post-game interview. Welcome everyone to the post-game interview. I hope you can feel the love from the crowd and some of your teammates and everyone as well as they left the stage yeah. for you and your performance. Uh, you actually did earn a player of the game for this one. So I wanted to ask you a bit from an individual or team level, what allows you to be so impactful in the early game, very heavily involved in a lot of the team's plays? I mean, honestly, I think, you know, my team is just really good. And I think we're all on the same page with what I can do in the early game. You know, in this game is actually the leader spirit that's like, hey, can you look for a little free gang? Like after free game, that kind of stuff is like, it's just like, you know, we're all on the same page. I was thinking the exact same thing. So it makes it a lot easier when you're really good teammates. So, yeah. <laughs> A bit on that note of being on the same page, I want to bring up something that Bwipo actually said in his Travis Gafford interview, that one of the things you all needed to work on is when to go into those fights and try to end versus when to actually pull back. This was a game where we did see some late game team fighting. So is there any connection there? What were your thoughts on that? I think we're having a little bit too much fun, I guess. Okay, uh, this time. At least for me, I mean, I think I, think I started the chain in, so I'm still having a good play of the game. But, you know, we have two in hips broken down. I just walk up like an idiot and die, you know, it's, it happens. Um, and then after that, I think 
you know, we just felt so strong that it felt like anything we do will be good. It wasn't. Uh, so, that, that, so, so that's kind of why it went the way it did. But I, I, don't, I wouldn't take too much out of this game, I think. Yeah, overall, a strong performance from you and the squad getting the W in the end. From what it sounds like, you all spent your break a bit differently from other teams getting some practice and stuff. Can you give me any insight into that? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have any extra days off, so we just played like it was a normal week. Um, you know, also, we got to show love to Honda and all the other, you know, sponsors. Uh, so that's some content we had to do. Um, but in general, you know, it's like it's, a, it's another week. And honestly, it's just nice having a not a break, but just like having two weeks to prepare for your next matches. I think that, you know, if you take it the right way, you can get huge improvements. Uh, so that's what we did. And I know with a team like this, too, everyone's always looking at Team Liquid. Every loss, they're right at you saying, oh, my gosh, what is happening? <laughs> so do you index into that at all? Or what does it do for your confidence just coming through and saying, yeah, we can smash this. We got this. I think, you know, when we play well, we play really, really well. We have some very sloppy games as well. And that's kind of what we're trying to, you know, improve on. Um, because I think, you know, at least like 80% of the time we'll play really well. Then there's like this like pretty bad game um, where... It just makes everyone doubt that we're a good team. But, you know, it's like, I think every team has bad games. And I think, you know, in the bigger scope of things, we lost two games, sure. But it's like two games out of potentially 18, right? So I, I wouldn't, like, judge too much of this. And I feel really confident. You're still 5-2 going into this week. Now you're turning that into 6-2. To get that even higher, you do have to face Evil Geniuses next, though. Thoughts on that matchup? I'm very excited. I mean, for me, it's... Uh, Right now, EG is the team to beat for us. Um, I've actually, for anyone in the league, I mean, they are spring split champions. So I'm really, really excited, and I hope we can beat them. All right, we'll be <laughs> tracking you on that journey. Congrats on player of the game. Thanks for stopping by. That wraps all of our games of LCS for the day. So we're going to go and break that down on the Bud Light Breakdown. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much to Tigris, and congratulations to Team Liquid as uh, they come away with the victory there. I appreciate Santorin's ability to laugh at the messiness that was the end of that game. I don't know what uh, you're talking about. <laughs> It went, exist. it went from looking like one of the cleaner and most dominant wins we've had uh, this whole split yes. with like a 10K gold lead at 20 ended. minutes or more even. Um, and then it turned into what it turned into. Uh, <laughs> but they were still able to, to wrap it up. And so while Santorin would pick up player of the game with our breakover, we are now in a sprint to the finals at the United Center. And make sure that you're fueled for these action-packed weekends with your favorite meals from Gubhub. Get $5 off your order of $15 or more with the code L. CS5 off through July 17th. Bjergsen, though, coming in with the shockwave. Hot with the intensity of 10,000 suns, Raz. Yes, very hot. He delivers the dub and the win for Team Liquid. And it started with the catch on towards Santorin, but these oh. three members just got it. That beautiful Ori ulti into the GP ulti, the collapse from Team Liquid to just snipe Golden Guardians. And so if we were to take it from any team fight after this point, it was way too large of yep. a lead for TL. So this was that break point for Team Liquid to just kind of start sprinting to the finish line. It was a very call an ambulance, but not for me. Moment for <laughs> <Sandorin>. <laughs> Especially since you had like GPL going over Lucian ult to soften them up too. Yeah. And a great shockwave. Yeah. So we give that winning moment to Bjergsen while it was Santorin, who was our top performer over the course of the game. As we know, he picked up Pog for this fifth and final game. Let's refresh on who got it for the first four. It was Jose Diodo, Jojo Pion, Fudge, and Poom. This is a pretty diverse cast. This is the first time usually we either have full mid laners, full junglers. The only yeah. role we're missing here, right, is AD carries. Yeah. Fudge has got to be getting up there in our like player of the game standings. I feel like his name has been around a couple times. That is true. Or it's like the first one, because I'm, <laughs> I'm probably mixing spring and summer together. But That's like, anecdotally, it, it feels like he's Weirdly enough, I think it might be his first one. The because they've game. only won four games. That's I'm pretty the sure the Kale game they won and he got that one. The yeah. Fiora game. Because the game won to Sven when he won. They lost. What's more quintessentially we Jack? for the Fiora game. Yeah, the first uh, yes. A bad metaphor like we kicked off the day with? Yeah. Or a this is true unless it isn't statement? <laughs> At all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's very common. That's I, that's my point. They're yeah. both pretty common. I love to play both sides. And I'm not really <laughs> sure which one is like the if if someone's like, what's the jat? You yeah, know, this is the like, worst decision I've ever seen. Unless, <laughs> unless, unless. <laughs> it isn't. Got word. Second. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> wonderful writer uh, Katie was able to give us one. So that was the second one, but he did get a rival. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. No, okay, no, no, okay. No, there no, you no, have no, it. No. There you have it. Let's take a look at the standings, see how the league sits. Uh, it was Santorn who called it out. The number one team in Evil Geniuses is the one that they've got their sights set on because it is Team Liquid Honda just behind them at six and two. Emily, you're already giving me the motion. This so what do you want to talk about? Our banger matchup tomorrow. Of Show Evil me that banger Geniuses matchup. Throw it up. Team Liquid. Woo. I am really looking forward to this for a lot of reasons and already was. Uh, but I think what we saw from TL today is that sometimes they still can get a little hyphy, especially uh -huh. when they're playing some of these more early game oriented or early to mid game oriented compositions that they're trying to snowball. Um, Obviously, they still had GP, so mm -hmm. they were probably fine. But, a, oh but and then EG are still at the top of the table. Yes. You guys want to add to that matchup? Just two of our best teams in our leagues. Like, it's funny, because yesterday I was sad when I was looking through the LPL schedules, and like, two of the best teams in there, it's like, oh, final week they get to play. Mm -hmm. So for us, we get a treat really soon, just tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and I really want to see how that goes, because I, I know that this is the second time they faced off, of course, this uh, split, but I always cast my minds off of that finals weekend in spring that they really want to make it very clear for their fans at home that they are the better team. Absolutely. I'm looking at the game just before it. Mm -hmm. CLG 100 Thieves. Proactivity yeah. versus inactivity. Right? <laughs> I did I did also ask Jet after, again, the discussion at the top of the day while CLG was playing. I said, Do you, if, if, if we're making the case that 100 Thieves is one of the slower, yeah. we're trying to change our, our verbiage here, but one of the slower, less action-packed teams, is CLG the most exciting and, like, and I feel like most of their games do turn out that way. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, absolutely. again, uh, possibly because they just always seem close. But I think that's an exciting team to watch, and it'll be interesting to watch 100 Thieves try and grapple with them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to say, even if they're losing, they always do something, yes. right? Like, we even heard from Dokla earlier. He was like, we knew we had to make yeah. these plays, and... We didn't sync up on all of them until that one in the Baron Pit. Yeah, and some of their losses that we had in week three, I was trying to say last week, and I remember the break. Yeah, yeah. Like. Um, it was, they lost because of their proactivity at times, mm. uh, specifically the TL, TL game where they had a humongous lead and Santorin was incredibly sad, but then they ended up biting a little bit too much. Um, so, like, it's going to be fun to watch that game. First game of the day is what I'm excited about, FlyQuest mm -hmm. versus TSM. Yeah, Ooh. TSM, I mean, I really want to see how this new squad forms up. And then FlyQuest just seems to be on a tear right now. Mm -hmm. So that one is going to be interesting to see if FlyQuest can keep that consistency or if TSM can really grow off of today's loss. So CLG, every game they play, something happens. Yeah. TSM. Yeah. Every day something happens, like regardless, because we know depending on the results of that game, the next day something else is happening. That's a good point. Yeah. Whether it's happening on or off the rift is to be determined. But it's something will happen. Man. That's true. Nonstop. Entertainment Good value. Cycle. That's what we get. Mm -hmm. That's what we get here at the LCS. Well, that's going to bring a close to our Saturday. Before we go, though, I want to extend a very special thank you to Hooney, who joined us for the yes. uh, for a couple of games as well as had his casting debut, and he absolutely there we go. crushed it. So go give him some love on yes. Twitter and all of that. Either way, uh, thank you for joining us here on the LCS. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow for more of it. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, be good to each other. And good night. Oh, that get was up. wow. That's one terrible. week. Get up. One week, and that's all three terrible. of you are so. <laughs> that was terrible. I like you. I do. Huge damage already. A stopwatch burn, but closer. Will he drop? Oh, he's gonna try to get away, but the flash follow Johnson gets the fifth kill of the game on FBI. He'll drop as well. A double kill for the Zarya. And we are still killless for 100 Ds. Looking for another one. Yeah, easy stun coming through. Philip serves him up again. Turrets will fall. And we are ready to go. Evil geniuses and Dignitas face off. Health bars low. Neo stays safe and be careful. Getting shot at. Trades one back though is blue. Looking in the back line. Wants to get a kill, but he's polymorphed. He's going to drop. And it's going to be Johnny Pound the board. Oh, that is Lulu dropping. It's three already. EG bide their time and they beat farewell. We live evil again. Seven and one still. First place. I'm in mid. Woo. Speaker looking mid lane. Flashing oh, to it. it is beautifully read by Maple. We're trying to get away here. Oh, fudge. Flash Q. Maple still burning away, but the last tick's not going to get him chime. The sacrifice Whoa. is dead. And the artillery barrage takes him out. 2 nothing C9. That's a Baron. Already going to be killed. C9, 4B5. It's still not even a big deal. I can't tank anymore.
Oh, nice. I need to get out. I need to get out now. No, we should kill this guy. I'm basing. Tuck him, tuck him, tuck him. Let's go, boys! Revenge peels up for the orange. Now, it's Poom in some trouble. Dokla's chopping him up a little bit. But Power of Evil has arrived. The man knock up for the follow-up from CLG. Oh, now Revenge is in trouble. CLG health bars are looking good, and Immortals are looking for any way out. I'm too good. You're too good, bro. It, well, exactly. I, I agree. It is important to mix up your pathing, and that is something that I think Sigma and more to win the game before Cogma even gets Yeah, it. win the game when Cogma's at two and a half. Santorin has no ulti to be able to get out of this one, but a nice shockwave means the Golden oh, Guardians are just getting eviscerated. Yo, the okay, crowd's Jay getting Jay. into it. Yeah! Team Liquid leading the way for him. I like this. Has Pride Stalker and Licorice still look to finish him off. Flash away from the Monkey King. Right, but the Nexus is under pressure. Oh, it's gonna go down too. Shut down. A Blaze Olive grabbing oh. that one. Bjergsen has no mana. Santorin tries to flee. Gotta Black go, they gotta go. Nexus is low. It was a valiant effort, but it will not matter. And Team Liquid takes the win. What a close game, man. And at the end, it was, it was actually starting to get a little bit dicey there for TL.